In this video, we're going to look at creating a composite image using Photoshop, Luminary AI, and Honoric. I know a lot of people that follow the channel are waiting on Luminar AI coming out and I'm looking forward to it as well I want to see the final version of it. Whether it can be used as a compositing software I'm unsure of and to be honest it doesn't look as if it's going down that route just now. Perhaps in the future it will be able to do it but for now it is getting your results fast and under control. That's the main thing with Luminar AI. Although Luminar AI scans your image, looks at the depth of your image, looks at the contents of your image, and then comes up some, with suggestions for you and what you could use and templates to edit your image, you also have total control of the AI elements within it. So for me, I do a lot of compositing. As you know, I'm a landscape photographer as well. So I thought I would try a workflow using Photoshop, Luminar AI, and another plugin that I used named Honoric, which is a lighting generator. And it all came together really, really quickly, which was really good. And it just lets you see that even if Luminar AI can't be used as a compositing software, it still fits into the workflow and that's a good thing as well. So without further ado, Let's dive right in. Okay, to talk you through this, I'll do this relatively quickly so that we can get into the edit itself. Uh, it's made up of a few layers and we started off, we had stars in this, but I, I wasn't too keen on the effect of the stars, so I left them out. Then added a sunset that had taken down a local beach and I actually stretched the sunset and then put a mask in and then applied the mask. That's why there's no mask shown here. I toyed around with the idea of the mist, but I didn't really like the mist in it, so I took that back out. I then used one of the planets, in this case it's Mars from the Luminar X membership. I then added the sun in down here, but before I added the sun, I actually put in this landscape, and it's just the sand, if you can see it there, the mountains and everything in the background, but didn't want them. I then added the sun, and that was just applied via a brush tool. I uh, put in the yellow sun and then changed the brush size slightly smaller and added the white in the centre of it just to emphasise where it was. The next thing I did was cut round the Mandalorian using the pen tool. After I cut round the Mandalorian, the cloak that he's wearing is torn and all shredded. So what I did then to get the shreds was I copied the layer up, Control and J or Command and J. This is a smart object, as you see. I rasterised the layer. I then applied the layer mask and then I went in and I'll zoom in to do this but I won't do the entire cloak for you and I used the smudge tool and one of the brushes in here and I'll show you what the effect it gave me. So if I drag that through it means I can add all the torn shreds of his cape that he wears and I did that and you'll notice that the brush moves each time I click on it and that's because in the brush setting modes I had shape dynamics on and scattering changed the size jitter so that it gave me more of a shredding and also the angle jitter if I leave that at zero and drag it down it will stay the same the next time I go to do it but if I change the angle jitter it will change each time it will make the brush a tiny bit bigger just to let you see this so I can do that and you'll notice that the brush has changed moving in direction. So that's how I created the shreds in the cape. The next elements we had to add were the TIE Fighters. So I added them in, in different layers and then combined them all into one layer. Then above that I painted the bottom half of it, this yellow and the top half a slight blue. And both of those colours were chosen from the palette that was available with the image so far. Then I created a mask and painted in on the TIE Fighters just the areas I wanted it. So if I click group one, you'll notice that there is a slight difference in there and of colour and toning in there. But not too much because I still wanted that grey effect, but they look slightly warmer uh, than they were originally. After that, the next thing to add was Razor Crest. And as you can see, Razor Crest is in here. And I also needed a shadow for it, which is down here. How I created the shadow, I then copied up the layer, right click and then apply a layer mask so that we're left with razor crest itself. I went over to image, adjustments, exposure 
and I turned the exposure right down. So there we have it, it's turned black. I then moved it underneath so we don't see anything going on here at all because I've put that black layer underneath the razor crest itself. Then using Command and T and holding down the control button, I dragged it down and dragged it out slightly, just to around there, uh, just where I can see it. Then back in here, so you can see how we're creating a shadow with this. Then put it back in, just roughly, I'll make this quick for this video. So we put that in there, and then I went in to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, added a bit of that, which is 5.4, and then pulled back the transparency of it. So that at least we had a shadow in here. So as we're looking for something to match up. And then the areas that it went over, I went in and just erased these. So that's where we are so far. The next thing I needed to do was add the lasers just to draw us in and round the image. So from that, it's quite happy. Now is the point to take it into Luminar AI. So now that I'm in Luminar AI, I brought it in as a single image edit and all I'm going to do is I'm going to add subtle edits to it. As you know, Luminar AI has all the templates and everything else that you can control. But for me, I only wanted certain areas affected by this. So I'm going to use the, some of the AI tools that are there, but as edits and not as templates. So the first thing I am going to do, as we have a sun down here, I'm going to go in and add the sun. So I'm going to get into sun rays and place the sun center. And as you know, it drops in up there. So I'm going to put it down around here. I'm not going to drop it behind the horizon yet. And what I'm going to do is boost that slightly. Just to around there, I don't want too much. And penetration, because I don't want that happening. So I'm going to reset that back to its default. The sun settings itself, I'm going to increase the radius. And the reason I'm increasing the radius is, if you can see from the original image here, there is a lot of light around here. So we have to create that atmosphere back into it. So I'm going to try and do that with the sun and the glow amount so that we can edit this as best we can. So I'm going to increase the glow amount as well and probably to around there. So you can see already the color is off. So we can get into the ray settings and we can change them. It just depends on what we want for this. Do I want the rays going up into the sky? Do I want them coming up from here? Do I want these rays down here? So this is when we've got to decide that probably the default setting for this is going to be the best one. Now we're going to control the temperature of the light that's coming from it. So I am going to push the warmth right up. And I'm also going to push the sun rays warmth right up. So you can see already it's beginning to merge into the composite that we've created. So I'll take that to about there. Just to around there. I'm not so keen in these ones down here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase them slightly. Yes, it will affect this entire area over here, but hopefully when I add the autumn effect and a soft glow later on, it will remove them. So let's just gently paint over them. And as you know, the brush is set at 50%. So if we can just hide them ever so slightly. If we take them out too much, you can see the difference in color there. So I'm going to paint that back in and I'm just going to paint it in like that. So we've got them there. We'll take care of them with the next edit. Next thing I'm going to do is I am going to go into the glow and I've got soft focus here, but in Luminar AI we have got Orton Effect, Orton Effect Soft. So I'm going to try the Orton Effect Soft for this one and I'm just going to apply that in there. And what that's doing, I'm only looking at the bottom of the image here. I don't care what's going on up here because this is where I am aiming for. That's not for this image. So let's just try the Orton Effect. That's okay, but before I move any further, I'm going to try the glow, just to see how that is. The glow is actually colder, it's a whiter light, so soft focus is too much at that. So let's go into the soft focus there, and we'll go back to the Orton effect for this one. So I am going to take the Orton effect to around there, then I'm going to apply that to the areas that I want to apply it to. So in this case, I'm just going to paint it into certain areas. 
and most of them are going to be around here. So we're going to take them over Razor Crest, we're going to take them back over here, up over the rocks. So I'm only applying it to the bottom area and you can actually see there's near enough a sweep here with the clouds. So if you remember it paints in at 50% opacity, so I'm going back over it to double it up. I could have taken it up to 100 and then painted it, but I need to build this up just to see how it's working. Right, and then we're going to push the amount just to around there. Okay, quite happy with that and it hasn't affected the top. The sun rays coming up here, I'm not sure if I like them yet, but I can see at the end. Next thing, into mystical, and I'm going to do the same thing again and push that just to around about there. And we've got quite a nice effect there. Again, I'm only going to paint that into the areas that I want it. So if I paint in down there, across there, and then paint it twice just to make sure because there's certain areas that I don't want it to apply to just as heavily. So I'm quite happy with that. So we're going to go back into glow and again I am going to paint. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to emphasise the lighter areas. So just on there, down this side, down there, and paint it in there. There's a tiny bit going down there as well. So you can see where we have added the glow. I may increase that one slightly. Yep. That's what I'm after for this. Let's paint some more in there, but that's already at 100%. So we're okay there. I may add a small one in there. Quite happy with that. So I'll turn that mask off. Okay, next in the agenda is back into the essentials panel and I'm going to get into structure. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the structure, but I'm only looking at the Mandalorian himself. I don't want it applied to anything else. So we have the Mandalorian and Baby Yoda there. And I'm quite happy with that. Again, selective masking, and I'm going to paint in here. And again, as you know, it's at 50%. So I'm just going to paint it in in certain areas. And then I'll emphasise again other areas because there is quite a bit of detail in the bands here and this face so that we, that stands out in the entire image. Right, there we go. Let's add some more to Baby Yoda. I'm not going to bother so much down here because we have a haze going through that. And speaking of haze, I am not going to add any atmosphere AI to this one because of the type of image it is. I don't feel that it would help this image any, it wouldn't detract from it, but I don't think it would help this image any. So I'm going to leave it at that just now. From here, I'm going to go to Enhance AI and I'm going to push the accent slightly. And you can see that, how that's worked. Again, local masking. And I'm just going to paint it in in certain areas. I'm being very liberal with this, but you'll notice I'm not going down onto the legs this time. I'm just picking out the top half here and I'm not even going to get into his hand because the glow that's going to be created at the very end is going to soften that so it's not worth doing that at the moment. So this is just a basic workflow of how I get to the end image. From here back into essentials I'm going to get into light and I'm going to use the smart contrast not too much with this one though. From here if I get into the professional tab I can get into Colour Harmony or Super Contrast. I'm going to play around with the Super Contrast very quickly just to see. Slight changes. Yes, I'm liking this. I've just got to be aware that it doesn't overpower the image. So this is subtle. These are really, really subtle edits. Mid-tones. Shadow contrast. And I possibly do want that, but at the same time, it's causing a line through here where the sun rays are in. So I, I'll go back and I'll change the sun rays ever so slightly. And then I am done here. So if I go into sun rays and I use the mask and I use the erase brush, I am just going to get rid of them and it's only 50%. I just want to take away the line that leads your eye through there and we've done it. 
So this I am quite happy with. I'll export this out and I'll take it back into Photoshop and show you the rest of it. Okay, we're back at the top now. For the finishing touches to this, I've brought back in the Mandalorian 2 Luminar AI export. And then there is a plugin that I use for any composites. And when there's a lot of light created within the composites as well. And the plugin is named Honoric and it's from Composite Nation. If, if you check through my videos, you'll see that I did a quick video on it before. And if you notice, what it does is it creates the layer there with the effect. I can flick that back on and off so that you can see the difference. I'm going to go in and create one more using Honoric. So you can see the light leaks that that plugin for Photoshop creates, right? I'm going to turn both of these off because I did them earlier with the image. And these were the two that I remained with. Just nice and subtle. And I'm quite happy with them. The other thing that I did was I brought in a title and the layer blending mode was lighten. If I turn that back to normal, you'll see. So I just went to lighten for that. And this is the final image. Hopefully you enjoyed that video and hopefully it lets you see where Luminar AI can work in synergy with other softwares and plugins. In this case it was Photoshop and how it quickly helped liven up the image and get the effects that I wanted for the final realisation of the Mandalorian image. I hope you got something from the video and I hope you got something from the workflow as well. Remember, stay safe, thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.